Get your free copy of the complete tutorial at www.teachucomp.com forward slash free. To make advanced changes to a selected image in your document, you can use the Format Picture dialog box to control every aspect of your clip art in minute detail. You can access this dialog box by clicking the Format Picture or Format Shape button that's in the lower right corner of the Picture Styles group on the Format tab of the Picture Tools Contextual tab within the ribbon. The options that you can change in this dialog box are grouped by category and you can see the category shown in a list at the left side of the dialog box. To use this dialog box you first select a category from the left side of the dialog box and then make any changes to the available settings in the category at the right side of the dialog box. Once you've finished making all of your changes you can then click the close button to close the dialog box. Unlike many other dialog boxes the changes that you make here are applied immediately as they are set. So you may need to use the Reset Picture button to reset your image after experimenting with settings in this dialog box if you do not like them. Now this lesson will examine what settings we can change in each category. First let's examine the various categories and what can be changed within each category. The categories that you can select are Fill, Line Color, Line Style, Shadow, 3D Format, 3D Rotation, Picture, and text box. The first thing that you should note is that some of the options may not be available for the type of object that you have selected in your document. For example, the picture category is only available when you have a picture selected. And if you have a picture selected, you may not have, for example, the text box option selectable. So in this case, they're grayed out. Now you can click the Fill category in order to change settings that affect the appearance of the inside fill of some types of clip art. For this to be used effectively with images, the selected image must contain a transparent section. If the image is already filled completely with its own pixel content, then changing these settings would produce no visible effect. However, if your selected image does contain a transparent background, then you can use the settings in the fill section to format the background area within the image. You can select the no fill option to remove any fill effects that you have applied to the selected image and you can use the solid fill option to fill the background of the image with the color of your choosing. You simply choose your color from the color drop down button and then you can use the transparency slider to set the level of transparency that should be applied to that background fill. You can use the gradient fill option to fill the background of the image with a multicolor gradient. A gradient is simply a color that transitions in either hue or transparency or both from one angle to another. You can choose from one of the preset gradients that are available by simply making a selection from the preset colors drop down. If you want to make your own custom gradient, then you can use the additional buttons and sliders to customize the gradient. You can use the Type drop-down to select the type of gradient you want to use. Linear, which changes colors from one side to another across a straight line. Radial, which changes colors starting from an origin point and then radiates outward in a circular pattern. Rectangular, which changes colors starting from an origin point and then radiates outward in a rectangular pattern or path, which follows the path of a line that you draw. Now once you've selected a type of gradient, other than path, you can then select the specific variation that you would like to use from the direction drop-down. So here we have different directions of linear gradients. Now also note if you select a linear gradient type, then you may select the angle at which the gradient changes by entering the desired angle in degrees into the angle spinner box. The gradient stop section allows you to set the number and appearance of changing points within the gradient's color scheme. At its most basic level, a gradient must have at least two gradient stops. For example, if a gradient changed from black to white in a linear fashion, then it would have at least two gradient stops. You can have more if desired. Use the gradient stops drop-down to select the gradient stop whose properties you wish to set. 
Then use the stop position slider to set the position at which you want the gradient stop to be placed within the gradient pattern. You then use the color drop down to set what color you want the gradient to be at that selected point. You can then use the transparency slider to set the transparency level of the color that you selected at that chosen point in the gradient. Now if you wish to remove a gradient stop, select the gradient stop that you want to delete and then just click the remove button to delete the selected stop from the gradient. You can also add more gradient stops by simply clicking the add button. The additional stops will simply be numbered and added to the gradient stops drop down. You can then select them and make any changes to their settings as usual. At the bottom of this tab you can check the rotate with shape checkbox in order to set the gradient fill to rotate along with the image if the image is rotated. You can select the picture or text fill option to fill the background of the selected image with another image of your choosing. Textures are simply images that are included in Word. To apply one of the preset textures you can select your choice from the texture drop down. If you want to use a picture that's located on your computer as the background fill, then you can either click the File button to open the Insert Picture dialog box. You can then use the Insert Picture dialog box to locate the image file on your computer that you want to insert. Or note that you could also click the Clipboard button to paste the contents of your clipboard into the background of the image. If you wanted to insert another piece of clip art into the background, you can click the clip art button to open the select picture dialog box. And you can use this dialog box to search for clip art to insert as the background of the current image. Now you can change the background image's offset settings in the stretch options section. And you would use the left, right, top and bottom spinner boxes to input the percentage by which the image should be offset from the selected side. However, if you want to tile or repeat the background as a texture, then you can check the Tile Picture as Texture checkbox. Then in the Tiling Options section, you can set the Offset X and Offset Y options to set the amount of horizontal and vertical offset to apply to the background image. You can then use the Scale X and Scale Y spinner boxes to set the percentage of the image to display in the tiled background. You can then use the Alignment drop-down to set the alignment of the background image within the main image. You can then use the Mirror Type drop-down to select the type of reflection to apply to the tiled images within the background of the main image. Finally, you can set the amount of transparency to apply to the background fill by using the Transparency slider. Also, if you want the background to rotate with the image if the main image is rotated, then make sure the Rotate with Shape checkbox is checked. The next category is Line Color. As applied to images, these attributes set the color of the picture's border. The three options shown at the right are No Line, Solid Line, or Gradient Line. If you do not want to have a line or wish to remove a line that has been applied, then select the No Line option. If you wish to apply a solid line, then select the Solid Line option. Notice when you do this, additional settings become available. So first select a color for the line border from the color drop-down. And if the colors shown aren't quite what you need, notice that you can select the More Colors command at the bottom of the color palette in order to open the Colors dialog box. In the Colors dialog box, you can create almost any color that you desire. This dialog box is available in almost all of the places where you can choose a color. You can either click the Standard tab and then select one of the colors shown in the Honeycomb of Color Choices. Or you can click the Custom tab and then select the color that you want.
Note that at the bottom of both tabs, you can use the transparency slider to set the level of transparency that you want to apply. If you opened the color dialog box to select a custom color, then click the OK button once you've made a choice to return back to the format picture dialog box. Note that the transparency slider also appears as a choice within this dialog box as well. If you want to apply a gradient line, you can select the gradient line option in order to view a different set of options in the line color area. You can apply a gradient to a border in the same way that you can apply a gradient to a fill, so these options should be familiar to you as we just covered them in the fill section. You can click the line style category in order to make changes to any line, or in this case the picture border, that changes its thickness or, or appearance. You can use the width spinner box to set the width of the line. If you have a multi-line border, then you can use the compound type drop-down to select the style of multi-line appearance that you would like to use. You can use the dash type drop-down to select the style of line that you want to apply. And there are several styles of dashed lines available. Now the cap type drop-down allows you to change the appearance of the ends of lines. This isn't often used in applying picture borders, however. Now the join type drop-down often is used in applying picture borders. The join type drop-down allows you to set the appearance of the junction points where two lines meet. Also note that if working with arrows, which are a type of line, you can set their appearance within the arrow settings section. This would not be the case with picture borders, however. You can select the shadow category in order to view options at the right that allow you to apply a shadow to your selected image. You can easily apply one of the pre-created shadow styles by selecting one from the presets drop-down. If you want to customize your shadow's appearance, then you can start by choosing a shadow color from the color drop-down. You can then set the transparency of the shadow by using the transparency slider. You can set the amount of the shadow by selecting a different size using the size slider. You can use the blur slider to set the amount of blurring applied to the edge of the shadow. You can angle the shadow by entering the desired angle into the angle text box or just by moving the slider to the desired setting. You can control the amount of vertical offset that is applied to the shadow by using the distance slider to set the amount of vertical offset to apply. Now if you want to apply a 3D effect to your selected image, then start by clicking the 3D format category at the left side of the format picture dialog box. In the bevel section, you use the top and bottom drop-down buttons to select a style and thickness of beveling to apply. You can also enter values into the width and height text boxes that are available. In the depth section, you can use the color drop-down to select a coloring for the beveling depth. You can also set the amount of coloring applied. And you can do that by changing the depth. In the contour section, you can use the color drop-down to likewise select a color for the contour of the bevel, and then set the size of the contour by entering the size of it into the size spinner box. In the surface section, you apply settings that change the appearance of the material and lighting used in the 3D setting. Use the material drop-down to select the type of material that the 3D effect should emulate. Then use the lighting drop-down to select an intensity and style of lighting to apply. You can then use the angle spinner box to set the angle of the lighting if desired. 
you can rotate the image in 3D space by changing the settings that appear in the 3D rotation category at the left side of the dialog box. When you select this category, you can easily apply a 3D rotation by selecting one of the presets from the preset dropdown. Now if you wish to apply your own custom rotation, then you can use the buttons and sliders in the rotation section to accomplish that. You can enter a rotation angle for the X, Y, and Z coordinates by using the spinner boxes or by clicking the adjacent buttons to rotate the object. If you selected a perspective style 3D rotation from the presets drop down, then you would be able to enter an angle into the perspective spinner box. If you were applying a 3D rotation to a text box, you would be able to keep the text appearing flat by checking the keep text flat checkbox. This does not apply to pictures, however. You can use the distance from ground spinner box to set the amount of space that the selected object will appear to be from the ground. You can click the picture category to make adjustments to the selected image. Note that unless you have an image selected, you will not be able to change any options that show to the right. Otherwise, you will see options at the right side of the format picture dialog box that will allow you to perform some of the basic image editing that you can also perform using the buttons that are available on the format tab of the picture tools contextual tab. You can use the recolor dropdown to select a color to apply to the selected image. You can also use the brightness and contrast sliders to set the amount of brightness and contrast for the selected image. Once again, you can click the reset button or reset picture button to reset your changes if necessary. If you click the text box category, you will see options at the right that you can use for making changes to selected text boxes. Since these options do not affect pictures, we'll skip reviewing them for now. Once you've made changes in the format picture dialog box, just click the close button to close it. Like what you see? Pick up your free copy of the complete tutorial at www.teachucomp.com forward slash free.